Acts chapter 2, Peter's been preaching, and it was a message that everybody didn't want to hear. Peter looked at that crowd of thousands, and there were more than 3,000 there. Only 3,000 got saved, but that means there were thousands and thousands more who heard Peter preach, and he said, you crucified the Lord of glory. You killed your Messiah, and it scared them. And as he preached, they stopped and he says, what do we do? And he said, repent, believe the gospel. He said, then get baptized and live for Jesus now. Now that was a hard thing for a Jew because a Jew was, man, they, they were following Moses. They were following the law. They were following all the traditions of all the, the, the history. Here was this call to follow Jesus. But you know that call is still going out. 2,000 years later, mm -hmm. a lot of people still find it hard, amen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what about my grandmother? What about my religion? What about, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. When you get saved, first test of your commitment to Christ is are you willing to publicly announce that Jesus is your Lord and Savior and that you are going to follow him? And that's what baptism is. It's a picture of what happened in your heart. When you, when you get born again, that, that all of that judgment that was poured on Jesus Christ when he died was applied to you. When Jesus was buried and put away, dead and gone for three days, that death was applied to you. Then that resurrection three days later coming out of the grave and that life that never ends was applied to you. When you got born again, all three of those things had your name on it. When you believed it, it was real, and it changed you on the inside out. It's called being born again. But nobody would know it unless you started to live it. So the first step of living it is obeying, and in the water, you're picturing your old life being buried, dying, being buried, and you living in a new life for the rest of your days, actually forever. So it is just a picture. It does not save anybody. I've read it every time we come out here to get baptized. Peter, uh, Philip was, was minding his own business, and the Lord said, I want you to go talk to a guy on a chariot. He's a very wealthy man, a very important man, a very powerful man, and he needs to get saved. So Philip runs up to the chariot, and he sees the eunuch, if you know who he was, this government official sees him reading the Bible. Wouldn't you like to see a government official <laughs> reading the Bible? Wouldn't that be a great day? But uh, uh, he arose and went to behold a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all of her treasure. He had, he had control over all of her money. And this eunuch had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He was now returning and sitting in his chariot, and he read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip, I like how Philip is, he's my kind of Christian. He ran thither. And he heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? I need help. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb, dumb or quiet, before his shearer, so opened he, not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Is he talking of himself or of some other man? And then Philip preached unto him what? Jesus. Jesus. He told him, that's Jesus. That's the Messiah. And as they went on their way, and as he began to teach him and talk to him about everything, about sin and righteousness and coming judgment, about living for God and turning away from the world and following Christ and even the, the, the importance of getting baptized. As soon as he said that, the eunuch said, See, here's some water. Now, that would have been a great thing out in the desert, okay, to come up on some water. There was no spar or centra just to stop by. He said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? What's stopping me from being baptized? And Philip said, Let's do it, right? He just said, If you want to, let's get baptized. Is that what it takes to get baptized? No. If thou believest with all thine heart, speaking of the gospel, thou mayest. If you believe what I've been telling you about Jesus, he said, then you can be baptized. 
And he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commands the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water. He did not go and bring up a little dribble and dribble it on their head. No sprinkling. What was it? They're going in, and they're going to picture the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When they both went down to the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. Now, the great thing about a church is we don't grow in numbers. Right? I'm glad when anybody gets saved, we grow in hearts. And you're no, you're no more committed than you are when you're ready to get baptized, when you can be committed to join. See, what we're looking for is hearts. We're looking for people who have a heart to follow Jesus. And the baptism is the first statement that I'm following Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen? So, I guess, Canista, you're right here. You're starting off. <laughs> you picked the right spot. Yeah. So, Canista, you want to get baptized, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> What's hindering you from getting baptized? Only your testimony. So we're going to listen. Tell us how Jesus saved you. Tell us what happened when you got born again. Um, I, everyone know me. Kanista uh, Monahan. I um, get baptized. I know Christ that uh, about 2011. That's my birthday. on 29 October. Yes. And the first time that I got a Bible from my husband. Uh, he gave to me Bible. And Bible is not is 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 the answer that God give me is gift that uh, he, he he give me love in John three sixteen I list and John three sixteen it give me and God love me or die for me and I I after that I repent I bow down and I say my Lord I I am a sinner. I am um, so much to do with this world. I and I don't know. I can go to. I, I will go to hell if I have no you. Mm. I I know you love me. Please, uh, please help me, help me. And then I I go to my husband and he said that that is you are in Christ. You are safe. Amen. Mm. And I I. Forgot that next thing that I have to stand and show that I follow Jesus. He died on the cross for me, and he, he I with him, he hid my in me, and I in Christ. Amen. 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 You know she's Amen. in Thailand, and this is very open. You guys, there's no threat to getting yeah. baptized here, but probably back home, I bet there'd be a lot of danger with having a meeting like this out in the open. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to do that, mm. no matter the cost? And that's what baptism is demonstrating. What a great testimony. Mm. All right, Niall, you're a, Oh, no. I, <laughs> I hiding behind her. I didn't know anybody could hide behind her. All right, go Sheen. How'd you get saved? So when I was um, six years old, my dad, he was telling me about the gospel and how to get saved. And then one day, he was in the kitchen, and then he said, if you don't believe in Jesus and trust him, you're going to go to hell. So... You better believe in him and trust him. And then, so the next day at night time, I went up to my room. Well, when I was praying, I said, Jesus, can you save me? And after that, I believed him and I trusted him. Amen. Wow. Amen. How old are you now? Eight. Eight. Two Eight. years ago. What a strong, <laughs> mighty young man. All right, now? It's been like, gotta be loud. I think Don't talk to me, talk to them. <laughs> 2014, I heard about the gospel a few times and I just never took it seriously. I heard that I was going to help but I never thought it was actually serious. Mm -hmm. But then when I realised it was, I looked into it a bit more and I saw that I was on my way to hell and I was a filthy sinner. So on my way to, in the car to school one day, I asked my dad a few questions and I just prayed and I asked Jesus to save me and I had faith. Wow. Praise the Lord. I'm very nervous. That's why I'm staying I over here. I'm not going to lie. I talk for a living, but when I saw everybody else, I was <laughs> <laughs> But I'm here. So I, I was brought up a Catholic, and uh, when my husband first said he was going to Eason's to buy a book, I thought it was a book to read. So when he came home with the Bible, I thought he was having a bit of a nervous breakdown because <laughs> in in my house I was the one who brought the kids to mass and we you know that we had the sacraments or whatever. But through time, that was in 2013, and then in 2014, 
he was going to church with Kevin and Eileen and we went over and I said, okay, I'll go. Because I'm actually quite stubborn. <laughs> so we went along and through time we listened to preaching and then Clive and sitting as a family and then I just thought, you know, life, I, I just prayed to the Lord. I just prayed and asked him to come into my heart and save me. I got down on my hands and knees in my bedroom. I can still remember it to this day. Hallelujah. And since then, life is so much easier. The calmness that we get as a family, the way we just offer everything up to Christ. Yes, we live in this world. Yes, we have flesh. Yes, we still sin. And your sermon today was absolutely brilliant for me. So there is a battle always in your head, but at the end of the day, you just turn to Jesus and offer it up and that's it. So I was still very nervous coming down in the car and then I said, no, I'm going to do this. Amen. So, Amen. This, the only thing that was scaring me was that water, a terrified <laughs> water. So you have to mind me in there. <laughs> Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. She said she was quite stubborn. I <laughs> was very stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> witness how it was it was amazing it was humbling it was I cannot help myself but to cry I was brought up in church I know my my sister is safe I know I I, there is something wrong, there is something missing. I know it really well. But it's just the pride. It's just the oh I'm I'm okay, I'm doing okay. I'm I'm in I'm in a comfortable position. I'm in a comfortable zone. I'm, I'm very comfortable with my life. And then I went to college and I I I I had a job, I had a wonderful job. I was busy going to church and coming home and going to the school. Then I was I was just busy. I I'm, I'm busy enough to to think that I have to be safe. But it was really a struggle. And then I met my husband. Then we went to Ireland. Oh, and then there, once in the church, uh, brother Dan led the the communion on that on that sunday it was already a struggle for months it was really the stubborn and the stubbornness and the pride and then on that sunday brother dan led the communion and then it was john i remember it exactly really well it was john who brought these elements and then darling would you like no and then i stood up and my, my husband, there is something wrong. I did not. Uh, I did not tell him that I was not safe. He kept on. He kept on asking me because he could remember very well when he was safe. And then he asked me, when, when, when you were safe? When, when was, the, when, when was that? And then I, I was so good in debating the topic mm -hmm. then he know very well there is something wrong and days and there are some days that i'm acting strangely maybe i'm 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 good he kept on saying i'm i'm, I'm good i'm a good wife but there is something and he knows it very well and then on that time the next i think the next day or two day two weeks after <coughs> Thursday, after that communion, this Thursday, I, after I had the devo devotion, and my husband went to the attic because our daughter is so friendly, not sleeping also the night. <laughs> because he could not bear not to sleep. He's dead the, the, the next night, the, the next day. So he went there, and I want to call him, I, I wanted to call him to continue the devotion. And then on that night, I committed that I have to I have to submit to God. Mm. I have to repent that I am a sinner. And then uh, on that night still the struggle of the stubbornness and the pride. Then I, I, I told God I have to I have to tell my husband tomorrow. And then the next the next day, no, my mouth is shut. <laughs> and then so Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday, Jennifer just, I could still remember this very well. I told my husband I have to make it short. And then he said, 
No, I don't think so. You're a talker, so I, can, I should talk. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then on, the, on that Sunday, I could remember it very well. It was so busy. There were so many people in the back after the tea break. So many people in the back. Jennifer came along, and then she said, Hi there! Who are you? God, God put you in my heart. Oh, there it is. There it is. I, I told God I have to submit. And then, and yet, that that day, nothing happened. And then I, God put you in my heart, and then it struck me. I have to do something. I have to do something. And then we came home. It was drizzling. It was drizzling, and then I kept on. We should hurry up. We should hurry up because we just walked from home, from from church to home, and then our kids were playing around. It was a bit irritable. But there is a, it was not about the kid, the situation, that it's wrestling, it was about me. Mm -hmm. And then, when we went home, the kids were in bed, uh, three kids were in bed, and then we were in the kitchen. It's really boggling on my mind. It was God that you have to do something, you have to do something. Today, not, not tomorrow, to, you have to do it today. You have to do it now. Amen. And we were, we were discussing the message of... Andrew, Andrew Bridgewater, we, we were discussing about his message, and I told him, I told my husband, for the very first time that I am not safe, for the very first time, but I know it very well, that I am not safe, and then he said, you should do something now, you have to get safe now. And then I told him I have to call Jennifer and Andrew to come along. And then on that at 12th of February, I got saved. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord that the stubbornness and the pride just God get rid of all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I grew up in East Germany, the former GDR, a communist country. Where the government succeeded to make the people atheists. My life was full of sin. Ignorance. Mm -hmm. and at the end of those days, uh, there was only emptiness and desperation. I remember I couldn't sleep anymore. I didn't know how to continue. And then a miracle happened. Mm -hmm. The Lord opened my eyes. Mm -hmm. He picked me up from the ground. Somehow he let me, let me stand, let me see that I was wrong all my life. Mm. I remember that day, it happened in the Philippines, during a service in a very small village. The last Sunday in April 2012, very early in the morning, it came to me like a cold shower. Mm. In the blink of an eye, in an instant, mm. everything was so clear, so simple. Suddenly, I knew then in this in this very moment I, I had I had to follow Jesus Christ. I had to follow Jesus Christ. There was no alternative. Amen. And yeah, what can I say? As a Christian, I cannot count the blessings in my life. It is so wonderful. It is so amazing. I found a wonderful wife, a loving wife, and I have four beautiful children. Four, not just three. Four. It's I saw a picture of the last one. No, <laughs> <laughs> no she's the child. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for having me in your family. Amen. Amen. So, it's so awesome. It's so awesome. Mm -hmm. Couldn't you just stand and listen to everybody's testimony over and over yeah. again? Evan, mm -hmm. it's going to be sweet. <laughs> hold on, partner. Here. All right. Well, the Bible says in Acts 2, uh, 41, it says, And they that gladly received his word were baptized. 
was a big deal back then, and it is a big deal now. Now I'm going to start with Nile. Come on in. <laughs> well, I get my camera, and you guys just get you guys can come up a little closer. <laughs> One at a time. <laughs> don't crowd. You don't have to crowd the edge. Now I've asked uh, Andrew to come out with me. Oh, I should get the It's a bit cold, so make sure his uh, blanket is ready. Andrew. Yeah. Andrew's cool. So, I'll do this one. Okay? You'll do the next one. Now. Andrew. Uh, I hope your phone is not in your pocket. <laughs> 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 anyway, we're actually starting to enjoy it because we're getting numb. We're doing fine. <laughs> Niall O'Hagan. You ready to get baptized? You ready to live for Christ now without shame, without embarrassment, and say, you know what? This is good. He's, he's not only my Lord in my heart, he's my Lord in my life. By your profession of faith, by the authority of the Word of God. Now, you're going to hold your nose, bend your knees. I'm going to lean you back. We're going to get me a good position so I don't fall down. All right. Now, you're going to hold your nose. All right. No, you hold your nose. All right. All right. Bend your knees. By your profession of faith and by the authority of the Word of God. Because of justice, Jesus' command. I baptize you, my brother. You can breathe for a second. I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Take a breath. Buried in the likeness of his death. Raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Yay. Get a little bit. It's okay. It's floating away. Boys first, Papa. It's not that bad. It's just like taking a bath. Yeah. It's not that bad. Where's Oshino? Where'd you go? What happened to you? What's wrong? You know you're saved. You know that you know that you know. Are you glad you're saved? All right, are you, are you able to breathe? You okay? All right. <laughs> All right, take your hand, hold your nose. You don't have to hold your breath yet. Wait till I get you. <laughs> by your profession of faith and by the authority of the Word of God, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Buried in the likeness of his death. Take a breath. Close your eyes. Woo! Raise the likeness Yay! of his death. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm just going to go and get her. Oh, you, I was talking to you all the guys and then the girl. Oh. Yeah, you're going to be standing out there because we're going to get a picture. Come on. Get a picture. Brave woman. Brave woman. That was so cool. Now or never. I went under. Hey, just give it five minutes and you'll be numb. <laughs> it's cold when you first right. step in. You just have to keep walking and they'll get you. Okay. Are you all right? No. <laughs> ah, it'll be over very quickly. All right, by your profession of faith, and just Jesus Christ, and by the authority of the Word of God, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Buried in the likeness of the death, hold your nose, hold on tight, take a breath. Woo! Raise Well done, love. All right. Oh, thank you. I don't even go into the water. I'll next. Thanks, wife. Well done. Proud of you. That was handy, wasn't it? It's wet. He says it's wet. Like a lot else. Oh, your hair is all soaked to the back of your head. I have to say, getting to know these folks, watching the Lord bless. This is one of my favorite lives just to watch as God blesses him with more children. you get out, Godly wife. Brother, you ready to get baptized? All right. By your profession of faith and by the authority of the Word of God, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Bend your knees. Buried in the likeness of his death. Raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Right, now this is coming. Yay. Come on, 
on, think of Thailand. Twenty quarters. You get up to your knees. I'm actually warm. Yeah. No, isn't it? Yeah. Hold on to him. That's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> I thought for sure you'd have her in a wetsuit for the moment. <laughs> so cold. It's actually okay. Are you ready to be cold? This woman would be. All right. Glad you're saved. Amen. You glad you're ready to get baptized? All right. By your profession of faith, and by the authority of the Word of God, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay, hold your nose. Use this hand. Hold your nose real tight. Buried in the likeness of his death. Bend your knees. Raise the leg of the hey. <laughs> Can you stop? Oh, your feet went off. <laughs> Wait a minute, we gotta do it again. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're so wet. Okay. 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 No. All right, I'm gonna do this fast. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you ready to get baptized? Are you yes. glad you're saved? Yes. All right, hold your nose there, hold your nose. Because of your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Bend your knees. Raise the light. God bless you. Get up there. That's everyone. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Father, we love you. We're grateful that we get to live for you, Lord, and thankful for people who got saved. Today was not a day of salvation. Today was a day of rejoicing in our obedience. We've just taken a step of faith. If only we would do this all our lives, if we would just do whatever you ask us to do. Bless now as we go home. Bless our day as we live it for you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Want to get a quick picture with everybody, and then you can go home and take a hot shower.